<laughs> oh, hi, can I help you? There's something wrong with this TV I bought here yesterday. What is it, a fuzzy picture? Oh, no, quite the opposite. Well, let's just hook it up and take a look, okay? <laughs> Uh, and sent three vehicles of fire in slain. Well, a community of 800 people, 30 looks like a great picture to me. Oh, no, it's not. That's Paul Reisig of Action 5 News. But he looks like he has no hair. He didn't look like that on my old set. Well, maybe it's not the TV, maybe it's him. No, Paul Reisig isn't the kind of journalist that would shave off all his hair overnight. You're right. Why don't I just refund you the money for the TV? Yes, that sounds all right. Okay. I'm the assistant manager. May I help you? Oh, Susan, I was just refunding this woman's money for a TV. It's on the fritz. Well, it looks okay to me. Well, look at Paul Reisig. He looks like he has no hair. He doesn't have any hair. Look at the other TVs. Oh, now, why would he shave off his hair? I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of a ratings gimmick. No, I don't think so. Something weird is going on here. Something pretty weird. Wipe that smile off your face. Hey, yo, she lady, come here. Get out, get out. I'll take care of you, Mr. Wong. Get him out of my store. What happened? I don't know. The guy's nuts. I just asked to run a copy of my favorite video, Escape from Alcatraz, and the guy flips out on me. Oh, well, Mr. Wong is very touchy about Alcatraz. He spent some time there. Oh, what'd he do? Kill somebody? Oh, no. He wandered away from his tour group and the boat left without him. He was stranded there over the Christmas holidays, so he doesn't stock any films about Alcatraz. <laughs> or Christmas. It's the smallest TV screen ever made. You wear it on your wrist, and then you can watch TV anywhere. In the pool, at church, even while driving. Oh, yeah, that's a handy little contraption. Think I'll be able to get uh, cable on this thing? Cable? No, I don't think so. Oh, that's too bad. What? what what's too bad? Uh, Stephen, never make a customer feel bad. Well, Mr. Wong, maybe you can help him. He wants to get cable on his wristwatch TV. <laughs> Excuse us for a moment. Stephen, what? You know the difference between a good salesman and a bad salesman? No. A good salesman does not have a lump on his head. We can give you cable. We'll run it up your pant leg. No one will ever notice. <laughs> Steven, go down basement and get all the cable we got. The cable? Ah, I think it's still in the truck. Well, hurry up and go get it and get Buddy to help you. Buddy love, Buddy love. Look, uh, I've got to get hooked up by 3 o'clock. There's a special broadcast from the Opera House, and I don't want to miss a single note. <laughs> I love Opera. <laughs> oh. Slip, are you okay? Oh, I don't know. They say there's no way to tell with concussions. <laughs> Apparently, you have to be under observation for at least eight hours. Say your place tonight. Slip, I make it a policy not to date employees. Bailila, bailila! In a blast that injured five people. A police spokesman... Hey, buddy, we gotta go get some cable from the truck. Yeah, wait a sec, did you see this? Paul Rising of Action 5 News lost all his hair overnight. Oh, uh, yeah, there was a woman in here about that earlier. Come on, let's go. Buddy, look. <laughs> it's a signal. A signal from Palamon the Wise One. Don't you think Palamon the Wise One overdid it this time? Look at all this junk. <laughs> yeah, well, buddy, maybe it's important. We better get going. Sir, what can I do for you? What can you do for me? Tony, look at the car. It's a mess. Ah, another message from Palamon the Wise One. Well, we think so. Drive right in, sir.
do you think the wise guy wants? He's the wise one. He's Palamon the wise one. Now, buddy, please don't do anything to embarrass me this time. Okay, I won't. I promise. I promise I won't. And when you wipe the Jupiter juice off your lip, you got a Jupiter juice mustache. <laughs> years to go. You know, I don't know why Palamon the Wise One can't come to us once in a while. Gee, I wish I'd have brought a book or some gum or something. Well, what do you want? You're flying through space. How often do you get to do that? I've done it often enough to get bored. Stop complaining. You know, I don't know why I bring you along. I know why. You're afraid to fly up here alone. I am not. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. Yes, yes. No, no, no. <laughs> Buddy, wake up. We're almost here. Oh, my neck is all sore. Oh, never taste the Jupiter juice in my mouth. Are you sure you don't have a gum or a mint or something? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Now, will you please make yourself presentable for the wise one? Okay, okay. safely and so quickly thank you wise one i came as soon as i'd seen that well uh that you wrecked my car hi uh, greetings uh buddy uh, buddy uh, yes buddy of course rocket boy i must warn you that you may be in great danger there are forces from the far galaxies with the power to expose your secret identity on earth if your secret identity as Slip Stevens were discovered, your life, as well as the lives of countless others of the universe who work for the good, would be in jeopardy. That is why it is crucial that no one knows the true identity of Rocket Boy. Well, Buddy knows. That's me. <laughs> oh, of course, Buddy knows. Well, with the exception of Buddy, it is crucial that no one knows the true identity of Rocket Boy. Well, my parents know. With the exception of Buddy and your parents, it is crucial that no one knows the true identity of Rocket Boy. Oh, and I told Susan Chase, the girl that works at the video store, but I don't think she believed me. And there were some people at the party where I told her, but they probably wouldn't recognize me if they saw me again. <laughs> With the exception of Buddy, your parents, Susan at the video store, and a handful of people who probably wouldn't recognize you, no one must know the true identity of Rocket Boy. I understand, wise one. Very well. That is not why I've summoned you here, Rocket Boy. Have you ever heard of the legends of Hawkhead? Uh, no, sir. Should I have? Hawkhead is a vulture-like creature from the planet Nesta. After centuries of preying on other galaxies, he has chosen a new planet to conquer. <laughs> what? <laughs> Earth. Oh, Earth! Well, what does he want on Earth? He seeks one of your planet's most precious resources. Hair. Hair? Human hair. Already heads of hair have been lifted off thousands of innocent heads and taken hostage. Well, that would certainly explain Paul Reisig of Action 5 News going bald, but wise one, let me ask you something. This hawkhead is going to hold hair hostage? Are you sure you've got that right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, and furthermore, unless someone can stop Hawkhead, every man, woman, and child on Earth will soon be completely bald. Ah, oh, jeez, Mr. Palomar, I'm really sorry. Leave it, young friend of Rocket Boy. Ah, uh, Buddy. Buddy, of course. <laughs> well, you two have important work ahead of you. Locating Hawkhead and putting an end to his reign of terror. Good luck, my friends. Now, I must leave you. I think he's gone? Yeah. Well, at least he didn't bring Mr. Pym with him this time. I hate that cutesy little... Oh. I almost forgot to bring you Mr. Pym. Yeah, well, 
wise one. We were just talking, and we thought we might do a better job without Mr. Yeah. Pym. Yeah. Without Mr. Pym? Yeah, well, it seems like last time you came along, he was really kind of useless. Uh, yeah. The failure was yours, Rocket Boy, for not properly exploiting the powers of Mr. Pym. He sees all and knows all. And the merchandising potential is unlimited. <laughs> Look at this, Rocket Boy. Mr. Pym T-shirts, hats, dolls. That's very impressive, wise one. But wait a minute. How can I protect my secret identity on Earth if everybody knows about Mr. Pym? I'm not talking about Earth. On planets much more advanced than your own, Mr. Pym is a hero. They build statues to him. They even celebrate his birthday. I think the time is ripe for this type of merchandising. Watch this. Did he just say something? Yeah, he said, why don't you just shut up? It's really annoying on these long trips back and forth from the wise one's mothership. Really? He said that? You can understand what he's saying. Of course not. Hey, look out! Wow, what is all this? Looks like a giant hair storm. Hey, buddy, I think it's coming from Earth. Isn't that Billy Coocher's hair? Who? Billy Coocher, the kid from the high school basketball team. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, he still parts his hair down the middle. What a jerk. <laughs> You don't stock it. There was plenty in the cooler. In the cooler? Well, where do you keep the Jupiter juice? The Jupiter juice? What's Jupiter juice? <laughs> I don't feel so good. Uh-oh. Another customer. All right, well, get rid of him. We got to get back to the store, all right? Hey, no, not with that. Just reason with him. Okay. What about Mr. Pym? You're right. We can't take him with us. Pym, stay. Let's go. It's over. The opera's over. I missed the whole thing. Where have you two been, huh? You can keep your TV watch. This place stinks. Oh, no, 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 no. No, don't blame the store. It's their fault, and they don't work anymore. You're fired! What? Oh, come on. I missed the opera. I've been waiting the whole week to hear this thing. Hey, that's Barbara Seville. Sounds pretty good, too. That's the most beautiful singing I ever heard. Hey, you made my day. I'll take that watch. Here's the money. Uh, in that case, you two can have your jobs back. Give me the money. Well, buddy, looks like Pim bailed us out again. I guess we owe him one. What is Mr. Pim? Is he a dog or something? Yeah, he's a dog. He's part collie, part... Buddy, help me out here. Uh, wolf? Wolf. He's an adorable little critter, whatever he is. How much you want for him? Let me buy him off you. He's a good driver, too. Give me a call when you find him. <laughs> Buddy, we gotta get that car back. Right. Uh, Mr. Wong, can we borrow your car? Huh? Uh, it, thanks. Hey, no way! <laughs> hey, my hair! Get my hair! Holy smokes! Buddy, your hair! Hey, get back here!
Hong Kong, my little bald-headed friend. Look at it. So your hair meant so much to you, you let it carry you into space. I'll take that now. Hey, give me back my hair. Keep away from those eggs. Those eggs represent the dawn of a new civilization. A civilization that will dominate your planet. But first, I'll take care of you. Twyla, unbelievable. But he just flew away. Well, we gotta act fast if we're gonna save him. Well, what are we gonna do, Slip? Yeah, how are you gonna save him, huh? He just flew into the sky. Hey, doesn't anyone work in this store? I'm not coming here again. Uh, uh, wait a minute, come back, come back, don't go. Hey, it's my time to have a Well, so much for Mr. Wong's help. Susan, we're gonna have to do this alone. But that'll be good. It'll give us a chance to get to know each other. Slip, this is hardly the time to come on to me. Your best friend just floated into the sky. Susan, Buddy is being captured by Hawkhead. Who? Well, that's right. You don't know who Hawkhead is. Well, you've heard of Rocket Boy, haven't you? No. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take you to the Rocket Boy secret fortress. And I'll explain everything there. Come on. Oh, wait. I don't have my car. Why don't we just take my car, Slip? Hey, that's a great idea. Come on. Comfortable? No. Oh, what's this? Hair. <laughs> Courtesy of human hair. For your people, hair is just a toy. Something to tease, to comb, to curl, to brush, to rinse. But to me, hair is essential for my egg nest. Which will not be completed, my short, bald-headed friend, until everyone on your planet is completely bald. Secret fortress, Slip? Yep. It's not quite fixed up yet, but it's coming along. Oh, Slip, it's just a junky old office. Well, what'd you expect? Well, I don't know. You made it sound like a superhero's laboratory or something. Well, why don't you just make yourself comfortable? I'm going to check and see if there are any messages from the wise one. Hello, this is Rocket Boy. I'm flying around the galaxy right now, so I can't come to the phone. Please leave your name and number at the sound of the beep. That's me, Rocket Boy. Rocket Boy, this is Inferno Man. Mark my words, I'm going to destroy you starting next Monday. And if I don't get you Monday, I'll be back Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Ha, ha, ha. Who's that, Slip? That was Inferno Man. He tried to burn up Earth a couple of months back, so I had to thwart him. Now he's always calling me and hassling me. Hello, who is this? Is this the number of Robert Boyd? I'm looking for Robert Boyd. If he's there, have him call the office. So who's Robert Boyd, Slip? Another one of your imaginary friends? I don't know who he is. Our names sound alike, you know. Rocket Boy, Robert Boyd. So I get a lot of his calls. Well, I guess there's no message from Palamon, the wise one. Ah, my head! Slip, there's a gigantic head in here. Palamon! Rocket Boy, what are you doing dawdling down on Earth? Don't you realize Hawkett is stealing more and more air every minute? Get up here immediately. I can't. I don't know where my rocket ship is. Well, then... Rent one. Just get up here now. I woke up this morning and I decided today's the day I'm going to buy my TV. Oh, congratulations. You came to the right place. Well, thank you very much. Now, I don't want anything too fancy. This is my first TV and, well, I want to start off with something simple and see how much I like it. You've never had a TV before? Oh, no. I've always resisted buying one. You see, I've heard so much about the bad effects of TV. You know, it's... it's faulty wiring, or it's, it's, it's mindless programmings, or it's, it's bad for your eyes, it's bad for this. I, I just didn't want to risk it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, I'm going to tell them sorry, Don't worry. What? Nothing but good can come from owning a TV. Are you sure about that? Yes. Why, I stand around TVs all day, and look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're right. Of course I am right. Now, let me show you a widescreen color TV set. Whoa! 
Color? Forget it. I, I don't want anything to do with color. I hear you can get uh, chromosomal damage done if you... If you're... No, I want to have kids. No, 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 no. Don't worry. I have ten children expecting number 11. Really? So it kind of works in reverse there. <laughs> and I can just walk right out there in front of them? Yes, yes. Come, just come. Just walk in front of them. Huh? Come. Hey, that's okay. I, I, I don't do anything. <laughs> well, very entertaining. <laughs> that's very... And I, I thought this was going to be mindless, you know. I could watch this all day. And to think, you know, I, I, I thought there'd be some side effects from this thing. <laughs> that, that, why don't you go home and think about it? Oh, I don't have to think about it. Believe me, I'll take it. I, right. I love it. I go think... home and no, think... No, 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 no. <laughs> I got no hair. Oh! I got no hair! Ah, where's my hair? You look like Joe Brenner. Where's my hair? You look... Where's my hair? Hi, Tony. We're going to see the wise one. Not in that, sir. You can't drive anything through this car wash except your special customized Mustang rocket ship. This is a rented car, Tony, and Palamon said it would work. The wise one told you that? Well, not exactly. This giant holographic head did. Well, personally, sir, I think you're going to get killed if you take that through. Slip, I'm getting out. No, no, stay. Uh, I, I'm too scared to go through by myself. Uh, we'll go through together, Tony. <laughs> What do you know? It worked. Slip, where are we? Hey, see, I told you it would work. We're in space. Wow. We're really flying in space. This is amazing. And I'm in my rocket boy uniform. Huh? Slip, why didn't you ever tell me about this before? Oh, come on, Susan. I tell you this all the time. Right, you do. And I promise from now on I'll listen to you. So now we're off to the Hawkins to save Buddy, right? Right. Well, no, not exactly. First we go to Palamon's, and then he'll help us locate Hawkins. Palamon? Isn't he that big old head that chewed you up at your fortress? Yeah. He's the guy who made me rocket boy. That's another thing, Slip. Don't you think you're a little old to be rocket boy? You're an adult now. Shouldn't you be like Rocket Man? Yeah, I get that all the time. But right now, I think we should concentrate on saving Buddy. After all, he is our friend. You're right. So tell me, have the people of Earth heard the legends of Hawkhead? I haven't. But don't go by me. I'm not really up on these things. Oh, really? Well, I'm quite famous enough to ensure the survival of my eggs. I've had to leave a trail of hairless, homeless victims throughout the galaxy. Are you really bad at ring toss, Hawkhead? It might help if you had hands instead of those clumsy wings. My highly evolved wings can do anything your hands can do, and much better. Watch this! Let's see, back and forth to the Wise One ship, hopefully saving Buddy, I'd say at least 1,200 light years. 1,200 light years? Slip, that's millions of miles. This car is on my credit card. Look, would you feel better if I told you the Wise One will pay you back? And even if he doesn't, the first 45 miles are free. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm sorry. They should have been here by now. Things are not right in the universe. I fear that all our dreams and everything we've worked for will be lost. Worst of all, it is the children who will suffer most. I will send one more message.
call it a night, Daddy O. <laughs> you know, all my life, <laughs> I've had to struggle to prove my wings were as good as hands. I think you've more than proven your point, Honkhead. But look, what is it you really want? It can't just be the hair. When my eggs hatch, I want to take my children to the planet Earth and have them live in a world where no one will mock them for what they look like, but where they'll be judged for what they really are. I dream of a world where they can live in peace and fulfill their destinies. Oh, that's a beautiful vision, Hawkhead. I guess that's what everyone wants for their children. Yes. Too bad no one will be around to see it. Huh? Well, for my plan to be successful, I have to destroy everyone but my children. Aren't you being kind of an overprotective parent? Oh, yeah, besides, you're forgetting one thing. Rocket Boy will destroy you. Rocket Boy? Rocket Boy? <laughs> I'll show you your Rocket Boy! <laughs> There's your rocket boy. What are you making your pathetic friend now? That's not rocket boy. What? Identify yourself. I've been trying to tell you. My name is Robert Boyd. Robert Boyd. Robert Boyd? <laughs> what an idiot. You can't even get names straight, Hawkhead. Robert Boyd, rocket boy, they sound alike. It's an honest mistake. <laughs> Is Rocket Boy then? I must find him and destroy him. Okay, I know where Rocket Boy is. You do? Sure. I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. If you take Boyd and me back to Earth, I'll lead you straight to Rocket Boy. And if you don't lead me to Rocket Boy, I'll kill the both of you. No, no, that's not part of the deal. If I don't lead you to Rocket Boy, you can have my wristwatch. Yeah, it's got an alarm on it and everything. Look. Never had a wrist watch. Never had a wrist. Let me see the watch first. Nice catch, Hockett. Now no one gets the watch. It'll be safe in there. Now let's go find Rocket Boy. Do you really know Rocket Boy? Yeah, he's my best friend. He's your best friend. Well, then why are you leading this maniac to him? Hey, don't worry. It's my plan. When we get Hawkhead to Earth, Rocket Boy will kill him. You mean if we get to Earth? I'm not sure he can drive this thing with those clumsy wings of his. I heard that. Shh. Get him started. He's really sensitive about his wings. You've got to admit, those big wings make him look pretty goofy. Hey. This is taking a lot longer than usual. If I had my rocket ship, you'd really be impressed. Where is your ship? Who knows? Mr. Pym could be anywhere by now. Which reminds me, the wise one's really going to be upset that we didn't bring him with us, so don't even mention it. <laughs> Greetings, Rocket Boy. And greetings to you, Buddy. Ah, uh, no, wise one, this is Susan. Ah, yes, Susan, of course. Did you bring Buddy? Buddy? What? You mean Mr. Pym. You wanted us to bring Mr. Pym. Susan, shut up. Ah, uh, look, I'm sorry about don't, Mr. No, Pym. No, no, don't be sorry. In fact, I wanted to thank you for loaning him your car so he could arrive so quickly. What? I just needed him to sign some merchandising agreements. <laughs> merchandising agreements? What? Soon, a new series of Mr. Pym products will be bringing joy to the young and to the young at heart. Look at these Mr. Pym action dolls. Well, aren't they cute? Gee, Palomar, thanks a lot. This is really nice of you. They're seven dollars each, Rocket Boy. Seven dollars? Well, nobody's forcing you to buy them. I knew it on your way. Mr. Pym! Yeah. Mr. Pym, you must leave the lawyers yeah. now. Join Rocket Boy and stay at his side. Mr. Pym will prove invaluable in your search for Hawkhead. 
Well, that's why we came up here, wise one. We don't even know how to find Hawkhead. Rocket boy, you must think. Follow the heads of hair leaving Earth. They will lead you right to Hawkhead. Of course. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Oh, don't be too hard on yourself, Rocket Boy. You have so much to learn. And you're still so very, very young. <laughs> well, that's another thing I've been meaning to talk to you about, wise one. You see, I get a lot of heat about this on Earth when I meet people. The fact of the matter is, I'm not really that young anymore. I I'm a grown adult and, well, I don't think I should be Rocket Boy any longer. Yes, Rocket Boy, I suppose you're right. The time has come at last. I cannot keep you a boy any longer. From this day on, you shall be Rocket Lad. Rocket Lad? Ew! Yes, Rocket Lad is the next step up from Rocket Boy. Congratulations, Rocket Lad. By the way, that's the same costume I wore when I was your age. Well, forget about what I said, wise one. I, I was perfectly happy being Rocket Boy. Please change me back. As you wish. Uh, we better get going, Palamon. Uh, Buddy might be in danger. Yes, yes, go, go. Uh, Rocket Boy. What? How did you get up here when Mr. Pym had your spaceship? Well, we rented a car, just like your huge holographic head told us to. In fact, Slip was going to speak to you about that. Remember, Slip? The rental car. It's on my card. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask if Mr. Pym could drive the rental car back and we could go in the spaceship. It's a lot faster. <laughs> Mr. Pym drive the rented car. Let me see that car rental agreement. I have to pay for it myself. Susan, Palamon the wise one oversees the forces of good for the entire universe. I think he's above our petty financial matters. And if you can't see that, well, I feel sorry for you. Oh, Slip, why don't you let me out here? What? Susan, this isn't like one of our dates where you can just get out of the car and walk home. What dates? I've never gone out with you. <laughs> Slip, what's that? It looks like a giant nest. <laughs> Susan, is your window open? I feel a grass. Slip, your hair! I can't see it's in my eyes! Slip, no! Okay, it's not straight. It's fine. What is all this? It looks like hair. It is hair, Susan. It looks like we landed on a giant head. No, it's not a giant head. From out there, it looked like a floating nest. A nest? We must have found Hawkhead's lair. Good work, Susan. See, it's fun to help Rocket Boy, isn't it? Huh? Am I right? Shh. What's that? I don't know. Probably some horrible creature Hawkett has guarding this place. I better go check it out. your home. That moron uses a record to guard his nest. <laughs> Susan! It's safe. Come on out. What was it, Slip? I've never seen anything like it. It was a huge prehistoric beast with, with spiked fangs and a, and a big spiked tail. It was orange. Really? Well, where is it now? Ah, uh, I zapped it. All in a day's work for Rocket Boy. <laughs> Good work, Susan. Next time, don't grab the gun out of my holster before I have a chance to spring into action. Okay, we better take a look around here, see what we can find. Hey, look at this, a watch. And it's still ticking. Sort of. It must belong to Hawkhead. Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to take it back to the ship, run it through the computer, see what I come up with. Well, Slip, I'm coming with you. Uh, no. You stay here. Just in case. Just in case what? <laughs> In 
expensive 20th century Earth-type timepiece, digital chronometer model, approximate value $2. No distinguishing characteristics except for inscription opposite face. I give up. To my number one employee, your pal, Mr. Wong. Buddy's been here. Like, what are these things? Huh? Oh, they look like eggs. Hey, listen, Susan. Since when is Buddy Mr. Wong's number one employee? What? Look at this. Oh, this is Buddy's watch. Mr. Wong gave it to him years ago. He did? Well, he never gave me a watch. Look, this means Buddy's been here. I'm afraid you're right. Hey. And, if I'm not mistaken, this is Buddy's hair. Poor guy. Oh, Slim. Do you suppose this is all that's left of him? <laughs> Go ahead, cry. <laughs> Let it all out. <laughs> to Susan, a good kid, your boss, Mr. Wong. Wait a minute. What's with that medallion? Since when did Mr. Wong start giving out jewelry to everybody? Sorry, Mr. Wong. Normally we wouldn't deal with something like this, but with so many reported incidents of people losing their hair, we have to follow up on every lead. Yeah, well, all I know is I came in here with a full head of hair. Then this mad scientist pushes a few buttons over there. Next thing I know, I'm scalped. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. You get him? Do you have any employees here who can vouch for you? Yeah, you uh, had a couple of kids working here. Nice girl, too. Uh, Susan, I think her name was. Yes, but they all took the day off. They all took the day off? Oh, don't you see it? He killed them, then he scalped me! I'm gonna kill him! All right, all right, all right. take him in and uh, close down this door until we can find out what the heck's going on. Close that door? You can't close my door! <laughs> Who it is? 
Susan are in grave danger. Do you understand? Not really. We have to rescue them. I, uh, I have a plan, but I think I'll need you to create a diversion, okay? All right, Hawkhead. We agreed to come up here on your wall of death. You've had your fun. Now, where's Buddy? He must have escaped, but believe me, I'll find him. Meanwhile, it will be my pleasure to add your hair to my collection. And I will leave your hair exactly where it is, miss. The most beautiful head I've ever seen. Oh, come on, Hawkhead. This girl won't fall for a cheap line like that. Believe me, I know. <laughs> it's time to take that hair, Rocket Boy. Now, I'm not going to kill you, so don't faint. So that's how you brought the hair from Earth with those wings of yours. Not exactly. I have an interplanetary hair transplanter for that. I use my wings for my own amusement. <laughs> and that machine can attract hair from any planet in the universe. And right now, I am collecting human hair for my nest of eggs. And after these eggs hatch, I'll turn Earth into a giant playground. With fire, blood, earthquakes. Everything kids love. <laughs> Buddy! Buddy! <laughs> yeah, our game's over now, Hawkhead. <laughs> I'll take you, Hawkhead. Hey there, Hawkhead. Enough of this nonsense! <laughs> Buddy, join your helpless friend! Buddy, what were you trying to do? I'm sorry, Susan. I thought the element of surprise might help me overtake him. So, your name is Susan. Well, Buddy didn't tell me that when he led me to Rocket Boy. You led him to me? Oh, well, thank you very much, Buddy. Oh, no, I didn't. He's lying, Rocket Boy. He's a liar. Well, if I'm lying, then I guess this wristwatch is all mine. Don't worry, that's Mr. Pam. I told him to create a diversion while I rescued you. You're doing a great job, buddy. <laughs> I don't know who that was, Rocket Boy, but someone just blew up your spaceship. No, Mr. Pam. Now what are we gonna do? Use the power, Rocket Boy. The power, Rocket Boy. Use the power. It's in your mind. Use the power. What is this? Seriously, when you let yourself get into a jam like this, too, Palamon. Yeah, he's really losing his credibility as a wise one. Oh, forgive me for not following your lead and wiggling around the floor like a worm. He's right, buddy. You did look pretty stupid. <laughs> While you bicker among yourselves, I'll speed up the process of removing hair from your planet. Wait a minute, Hawkhead. There's one thing I don't get about that interplanetary hair transplanter of yours. What's that? Well... How do you work all those intricate buttons with those big hammy wings of yours? Hammy wings? Hammy wings? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> correct, but he has no concept of feeling. Hey, something's going wrong. Hey, it's Mr. Pimp. <laughs> 
and he's got my gun. Good going. I'm afraid that's not so good. Why not? He doesn't know how to use a gun. Oh, no. Susan, farewell. 
On behalf of the forces of good in the galaxy, congratulations for putting an end to Hawkhead. Thanks. Thank you, wise one. Don't worry, kids. New nest is on the way. <laughs> Now to collect more hair from her. <laughs> well, it's not as good as hair, but it'll have to do. Besides, my children, soon you'll have a mother to take care of. <laughs> Rocket Boy, I am an old man, and my time in this universe is drawing to a close. Soon I will be at peace in a place very different from this one. Please, wise one, don't talk like that. Now, please, Rocket Boy, don't make it harder than it has to be. In the words of one of your authors from Earth, it is a far, far better rest I go to than I have ever known. Please don't go, wise one. <laughs> Who would take your place? I'm touched by your outburst of emotion, Rocket Boy. But I'll be back soon. What? I'm just going to visit some relatives in another universe. <laughs> I need you to water my plants while I'm gone. Oh, I thought you were dying or something. Oh, no, no. I'm going to a solar system that cannot support plant life. And to transport them would be too risky. Can you bring them with you to Earth? Yeah, sure, I can do that. I can't believe this whole thing's about your plants. <laughs> Tell me, Rocket Boy. Yes? This girl, Susan. You like her a lot? Well, yes, I do. Then you shall be wed. No, hold on, wait. I, 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 it's not that easy. I think she might have something to say about that. Oh, I see. Well, would you like me to speak to her? Put in a good word for you. Uh, no. I think it would be better if you just didn't get involved. I understand. I gotta go. But one more thing. My plants are very delicate. They should ride in the front seat. As long as I'm driving, I don't care where they go. But you're not driving. Mr. Pym is. I'm Jackie! Ow! This thing has prickers. Can't we just throw it out the window? The wise one isn't going to miss one plant. Yes, he will. Besides, I don't want to get him mad at me until he delivers my new rocket ship. One that this bozo won't blow up. Hey! Me, Susan. Wow, that's neat. Do you think that message is for me? Well, I think I can explain. The wise one was trying to help. The wise one wants to marry me? No, he thinks you and I should get married. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, you realize that's totally out of the question. Oh, yeah, I know. That's what I was trying to tell him. <laughs>
okay Mr. Tim is going to help me build the chips. Well, he ought to. He's the one who blew up the last one. Flip, we got to get the car back to the rental agency. Uh, you go on ahead. i got to take care of Palamon's plants. They, they need constant attention. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not taking that rental car back on myself. Well, why don't you take Mr. Pimp? He's the big genius around here. <laughs> oh, Susan, what happened at the rental car agency? Well, first they were going to charge me $180 trillion for all those light years we traveled. $180 trillion? That sounds about right. Yeah, but then I found out they had a special weekend rate with unlimited mileage, so it only cost me $45. See? Didn't I tell you everything would work out great? Yeah, right. Well, I saved the receipt so you can give it to the wise one. Steven, oh, get back to work. Yes, Mr. Wong. Susan, did you get me my newspaper? Oh, sorry, Mr. Wong. I looked all over town and no one had one. Hey, Susan. Yeah? Look at this. The birds. Get it? Remember? Hawkhead? Steven, you're fired. Get out of my store. Fired? What did I do? Flip, put that thing away. Listen, Mr. Wong, I'll take care of Flip. Why don't you fix yourself a nice cup of coffee? All right, all right. Get rid of that tape. Flip, don't you know Mr. Wong hates Alfred Hitchcock movies? He doesn't allow them in the store. Really? Why? Did you ever see Psycho? Yeah. Well, once Mr. Wong was vacationing at Mount Rushmore, and he had a terrible experience. Mount Rushmore? Wait a minute. That wasn't Psycho. That was North by Northwest. Well, let me finish. He left his tour group to take a shower back at the hotel, and he was stopped by a maniac with a knife. Ooh, a knife. That was Psycho. I get it. Hey, Flip, look, your new car's here. Hey, all right. Boy, <laughs> Tony did a great job on my car. It looks just like the old one. Yeah, pretty sharp, Flip. Yeah. What's that? Huh? Sounds like it's coming from the trunk. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Rocket boy. Hawkhead lives. Hawkhead lives? Yes. He survived the explosion and escaped with his eggs. You must search the skies. Get Hawkhead. And if you can remember, water those plants. <laughs> yes, wise one. Come on, buddy. We gotta go find Hawkhead. <laughs> hey. What's that? It's me. Excuse me. <laughs> I thought he quit smoking cigars. Yeah, me too. Come on, let's go. Pim, get in the back. <laughs> Good Pim. Come on, get in the back. All right. <laughs> Back so soon, sir. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> hey, what are you guys talking about? Forget it, sir. Nothing. Just drive right through. Buddy, what do you think Mr. Pim and Tony were talking about down there? This is going to take some time to find Hawkhead. You know, Rocket Boy, we've been spending an awful lot of time away from the video store. Think Mr. Wong is mad at us? I don't know. Maybe we ought to check in down there and see. Good. Here's your walk, Miss Cynthia. Mr. Wong fixed it personally. Oh, thanks. So what did you do this weekend, Susan? Anything exciting? No, just hung around the same old jerks. <laughs> same old jerks? Well, thanks a lot. I know exactly what she's doing, buddy. She's protecting my secret identity as Rocket Boy. She's very clever. Did you know that Slip Stevens is this guy Rocket Boy? Rocket Boy? Who's that? He flies around in space. It's really kind of incredible. I don't know what to think of it. Boy, that really sounds stupid if you ask me. Susan, Susan, did Steven and Buddy come back yet? No, not yet, Mr. Wong. Hmm. Well, when you see them, tell them they're fired. How many times is it we've been fired? I don't know. I've lost count. <laughs> hey, I think we tracked something. Yeah, yeah. I think we found him. Oh, it's got to be Hawkhead. Brace yourself, buddy. It's Rocket Boy time. <laughs> That's not Hawkhead's ship. It's not. Whose is it then? That's the wise one's mothership. Oh, the wise one? What's the wise one doing out in this galaxy? I don't know. Hey, I remember. He's on his way to visit his relatives. Buddy, we better check in with him. Maybe he can tell us where Hawkhead is. Yeah, maybe he can feed us too. I'm starved. <laughs> Which one of you is 
Mr. Wong. I am. Yes, may I help you, sir? I'm having trouble with the vertical hold on my telescreen. I'd like you to look at it. Sure, sure. Where is it? In my vehicle. Well, then why don't we go out and bring it in, huh? Susan? I'm going to need help carrying this man's TV in from his car. Sure, Mr. Wong. <laughs> mister, mister, can you give me a ride? Go away. Oh, all right. Hop <laughs> on. For me, kid. Hawkins, you're alive. Daddy, that man looks like a chicken. I want one. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't talk like that, son. The, uh, the poor man isn't as fortunate as we are. Oh, really? Well, I suggest you take a good look at yourselves, at your puny little arms and hands, and then tell me who's the unfortunate one. Hey, buddy, you realize how long it's been since we had something to eat? Oh, I know. I hope the wise man has something we can nibble on. Yeah. Greetings, Rocket Boy and Buddy. Wow. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise to see you this far out in the galaxy. Oh, but look at me. Eating in front of you like this. How could I be so rude? Come and sit down. Okay. okay. <laughs> So tell me the good news. How did you stop Hawkhead? Stop him? No, sir. We didn't even find him yet. Yeah, we've been flying around the universe for hours looking for him. You haven't found him? He's on Earth at the video store. What? Didn't you get my message? Yes, sir. It said search the skies. That's right. Search the skies over the video store. How could anything be more clear? <laughs> what other skies could I have meant? Don't tell me you were up here searching the universe. The universe is infinite. It would have taken forever. What were you going to do? Just fly around and hope you stumbled onto him? Well, sir, I didn't think... That's right. You didn't think. Well, I hope you're giving a little more thought to my plants than you are to stopping Hawkhead. Now get back to Earth immediately. Yes, wise, yes, wise one. one. Mr. Pym, I'm sure you had nothing to do with this horrible blunder of Rocket Boy. Oh, <laughs> Search the skies. What kind of message is that? He could have said Hawkhead is coming to the parking lot or don't leave the video store, but search the skies, that's just stupid. Well, we sure wasted a lot of time, that's for sure. Yeah. Hey, buddy, put on the monitor, quick. Why, what are you doing? Just put it on. Come on, who's Rocket Boy around here? <laughs> you dare to laugh at my wings? Well... Infection. <laughs> uh, Butterfingers. I hope he doesn't drop me. What? <laughs> Hawkhead's really out of control. Oh, you know it. Well, maybe losing all his feathers made him go insane. What are you talking about? He was insane before he lost his feathers. <laughs> okay. Listen up. I have a wonderful announcement to make. I have come to Earth to claim my bride. A woman who will be mother to my nestlings after they hatch. Susan, I know I'm not perfect. But will you marry me and be there for me and our children to give us the moral strength we need to destroy the Earth as you know it? Never, Hawkhead. You'll never take me with you. Oh, I think I will. With my servant, Mr. Wong. <laughs> yes, Mr. Wong, it will be my pleasure to turn you into a hideous monster who will obey my every command. I serve no one but my customers, Hawkhead. <laughs> if you were to buy a big TV and a stereo... Silence! <laughs> <laughs> 
Transformation is complete. Wong? Yes, Master. Let's escort my bride. Hey, where is everybody? Look there. Look at boy, look. What? Right there, look. Oh. Hey, great handwriting. I wonder who did it. Mr. <laughs> Wong requests the pleasure of your company at the wedding of Susan Chase to Hawkins. Tonight at 8 p.m. Well, this can't be Susan's idea. She's too wrapped up in her career to marry a guy like Hawkhead. Well, reception to follow immediately. Activities to include juggling, balloon sculpture, Swedish massage, death of Rocket Boy, that's you. Hatching of my eggs, destruction of Earth. Death of Rocket Boy? Gee, maybe I better just send a gift and stay home. Well, staying home won't help. He's gonna blow up the whole planet. You're right. You know, I think he told me something about this when I was trapped on a ship. Sorry I forgot to mention it to you. Well, don't be too hard on yourself or anything, buddy. Hey, what was that? Come on, we gotta go stop this wedding! <laughs> No, Hawkhead's getting away. Come on, buddy. We gotta go catch that handless monster. Well, wait a minute. There's no one minding the store. Don't you think we should lock up? You're right. Mr. Wong would kill us if we closed the store on a business day. <laughs> Him, you stay behind and mind the store. Think <laughs> we can trust him? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he'll be all right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Tonight. I bet it's going to be on Hawkhead's ship. Gee, that's not fair to the bride side of the family. How are they going to get to outer space? <laughs> Buddy, what are you talking about? There isn't going to be a wedding. We're going to stop it. I hope. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think we found our wedding party, buddy. Dad, are we really in outer space? No, son, this is just a promotional gimmick for Mr. Wong's video store. Uh, right, Mr. Wong? Hoghead is my master. We must celebrate the arrival of his queen, Susan Chase. There, there, see? <laughs> Wong! Yes, master. Show our guests to their rooms. I'm sure they'll want to freshen up before the festivities. Yes, master Hoghead. Leave Susan here. Susan? Stay here and please our master, first warrior king of the universe. The rest of you, this way. Well, my little dove, excited about the wedding? How do I look? You feathery freak. I'm not going to marry you and help you steal hair and blow up planets. All that's behind me now. I admit I have been somewhat of a workaholic. And I have put career before my personal relationships. But I'm ready to settle down. As soon as the eggs are hatched and we've destroyed everyone on Earth, then you and I can retire there and leave the business of destroying other planets to the kids. Do you mean these eggs are going to hatch and turn into horrible monsters like you? Oh, mind you, I'm not going to push them into it, but I would be happy if they showed some interest in their father's business. <laughs> now, why don't you go put on your wedding gown? I want us to be legally married before the first egg hatches. Oh, Hawkhead, this wedding will never happen. Rocket Boy will stop you, and I'm sure he's on his way even as we speak. Really? Well, I hope he gets here in time. There's nothing I'd like more than one of your old boyfriends at the ceremony. My boyfriend? I've never gone out with him. Oh, he's not? 
Well, you wouldn't know it from the way he talks. <laughs> Hey, Rocket, why don't you think you're driving a little fast? Of course I'm driving fast, buddy. This is a rocket ship. Oh, I know, but it's a new rocket ship. Oh, don't you think you should be breaking it in gently? Who are you, my mother? We're not out here on an astronomy project, you know. We gotta catch Hawkeye. Well, at least keep both hands on the stick. Relax, I've been driving these ships for years. Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, but look at the wise one's plants. Oh, no, you take care of the plants. I gotta try and start the ship. I think I broke it. You did a number on the wise one's plants, too. Well, what are we gonna do? Oh, boy. I don't know. I've never heard it before. Who's that? I don't know. I've never seen him before either. This is a pre-recorded warning to the driver of this Mustang rocket ship number 3741X. Because you have driven recklessly, this ship has automatically activated its emergency stop mechanism. Your ship will remain in its full stop position for the next two hours. Two hours? We don't have two hours. <laughs> During this time, We'd like to review some basic rocket safety precautions you should have learned before purchasing this vehicle. This is for your own safety and for the safety of everyone out here. Remember, space travel is a team effort. This is awful. There's no way to turn them off. Reckless driving can be the result of one or a combination of many conditions. Anxiety, fatigue, drunkenness, or just a bad attitude. Do you have a bad attitude? Shut up! <laughs> Thank you, oh, Agile, a very... That's the fifth one you've popped, Wong. Be careful. I'm sorry, Master. Thank you, Master. Oh, Susan, you poor thing. Are you really going to marry that guy? Well, I don't want to, Cynthia, but I'm worried about the safety of everyone on the ship. I don't think you should go through with it. Ew, don't marry that monster. Well, at least not until you've given it more thought. Well, if I do have to marry him, will you three girls be my bridesmaids? Oh, yeah! I'd love to! Oh, Lou, you must be so happy! Oh, come on, Julie, think about it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Place looks very nice, Wong. And who might you be? I'm the entertainment. Well, I was expecting a much larger orchestra. Don't worry. I can handle this crowd, Pops. I want a lot of dance music. And when I give you the signal, play something romantic. Gotcha. Master, there's an infernal man on the phone. He wants to know why he wasn't invited to the wedding. I better talk to him. Hello, infernal man. Yeah. Look, it's a, it's a very small wedding. Hardly anybody's gonna be here. Only Susan's friends. No, don't think of it. Don't think of it. The only person that said anything was Ice Face. Well, what do you think he said? Rule number 48. Don't be a show-off driver. We know that when sitting behind the wheel of the Mustang rocket ship 3741... How much longer? It's tempting to want a hot rod... 13 minutes, 6 seconds. Oh, no. You can impress your passengers more by getting them safely to their destination. Believe me, Inferno Man, nobody you know is gonna be here except Rocket Boy. I'm killing him as part of the festivities. Yeah, look, I got a million other calls. I gotta go. Hello. Who is this? What? Well, I'm not talking to you. Why? How did my ex-wife get my phone number? I don't want her ever calling here again. Do you hear me? Yes, Master. Susan, your engagement to Hawkhead, Conqueror of the Earth, brings honor to my video store. <laughs> 
Well, this concludes our safety review. We'd appreciate hearing your comments about this presentation. Call us toll-free at Nine, code Lambda Mega, eight, TLX H47. Seven, nine, six, six, five, five you, four, three, two, one. Watch on. Everybody, please be seated. The wedding is about to begin. Quickly, quickly. Oh, gee, I hope we're not late for the wedding. Don't worry, buddy. We'll stop, Hawkhead. We're almost there. Buddy, what are you doing back there? I'm just getting ready. I don't want to embarrass Susan by looking like a slob. Let's go break up this wedding and put an end to Hawkhead for once and for all. Wait a minute, Rocket Boy. Aren't you forgetting something? What? Your helmet. You know what you're up against with Hawkhead. You have to wear your helmet. Oh, buddy, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And it flattens down my hair. It makes it look like I just woke up. But it's what gives you your superpowers. What are you planning to do? Walk in there and go boo and hope Hawkhead will say, Oh, it's Rocket Boy. Look at Rocket Boy. I surrender. I'm history. Lock me up. All right, all right. I'll put on my helmet. You know, sometimes you can be really obnoxious. This is the voice of the Rocket Boy helmet. Do you hear me? Ah, of course I can hear you. While wearing this helmet, you will have the power to fly, turn invisible, see through walls, breathe underwater, and have super strength. I know, I know, not so loud. Remember, Rocket Boy, the powers will be yours when you hear the tone. Come on, let's go get Rocket. I'm sorry, buddy. That thing's just too loud. Right. Hey, I can use my wits to stop Hawkhead, right? Sure. Okay. You know something? What? Your hair does look like you just woke up. <laughs> really? Yeah. How's it look now? Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to unite this woman and this Hawkhead in holy matrimony. Hawkhead, do you take Susan to be your mate and mother to your eggs? I do. Oh, thank you, great master of ceremonies and lord of shiny shoes. And Susan, do you take Hawkhead to be your husband, support his evil plan to destroy Earth and dominate the universe for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, until you are no longer of use to him and he has to kill you? She does not. Rocket Boy! Yeah. Rocket Boy, I'm glad you received my invitation. Wong, well, take care of my special guest. Yes, Master. Buddy, I won't be needing this. Play something appropriate.
power, you can control Hawkhead's mind. Use the power. Okay, I'll try. Good luck. Hawkhead, you don't want to marry Susan. I don't want to marry Susan. She belongs down on Earth. She belongs down on Earth. You will release her. I will. Okay, snap out of it. Use your own mind control to defeat Rocket Boy. Ah, another head. Who are you? I am X-Con, master of evil in the universe. <laughs> you are in my tower. You are in my power. Die, Hawkhead. Die. have been trying to stop him. In the end, it's a traffic violation that did it. He should get at least 25 years. The eggs were sent to a juvenile detention center. All Hawkhead left us were his boots. By the way, how are my plants doing? Oh, well, actually oh, I meant to talk... My plants! Oh, they look beautiful. You've taken wonderful care. Happy honeymoon, Hawkhead, your pal Inferno Man. Well, I guess I just have a green thumb. Slip, is there anything we can do for Mr. Wong? He still thinks Hawkhead is his master and ruler of the galaxies. He's not having a very good time. Well, don't worry about it. We'll get that antenna off when we get him home. Mr. Pym! 
Yeah. You're supposed to be minding the store. Look, Slip, he sold everything in the store and saved the receipts. <laughs> Great going, Pim. You know, Rocket Boy, it's a shame to let all these wedding decorations go to waste. Oh, yeah. Hey, Susan, what do you say? I'm not sure, Slip.